Hello everyone and uh, welcome to today's webcast, What's New? InfraWorks 360 for the June 2015 release. My name is Eric Chappelle, Community Evangelist for InfraWorks 360. And we'll have Chakri Gavini uh, doing the bulk of our presentation today. And uh, as I understand it, Dan Philbrick will be joining us at some point as well to uh, maybe chime in and answer some questions. Um, before we get to the main presentation, I wanted to just talk about a, a couple of uh, general slides about uh, our webcast series and about the community. Um, if you haven't been to uh, one of these webcasts before, we do this twice a month, or we've been doing this twice a month. Typically, it's the first and third Wednesdays of the month. And the goals for this series is to, uh, to inform you about InfraWorks 360, keep you informed about what's going on, and we want to do it from the perspective of the product team. So we want you to hear directly from the folks who are developing the technology and uh, give you a chance to ask questions and provide feedback. And generally speaking, just bring you guys, the users, and our product team, the makers, closer together. We want to let you know that uh, we've got another webcast planned for uh, July 1st, so continuing with the series. And uh, I'll call this a working title. Right now we're, we're saying this is going to be best practices for InfraWorks 360 web and mobile viewing. So if you're looking for tips and tricks on how to get the best performance and the best look out of your scenarios and viewing things through the web viewer on either in your browser on a PC or on your mobile device, this is, uh, this is the one for you. So um, watch for information on how to register for that event on any of the locations that you see on your screen now, including the community site, the forum, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, social media as well. Some other webcast topics that we're, uh, we're thinking of presenting, just so you guys have an idea what we're up to. Um, you can see those on your screen here. Um, we've, been, we've been bringing in about 80 to 100 um, attendees for each of the webcasts, so we would love to break triple digits today or at, uh, at some point in the future. We haven't quite hit the, the 100 mark, but it's been a pretty steady uh, attendance. So please spread the word about the webcast, let people know that we're doing this, and let them know to look on, on the community um, pages and, and social media for how to sign up. I have a couple of polls that I'd like you to um, participate in, if you don't mind. The first one is about webcast topics. So I want to know which webcast topics from a few choices that you would like to, uh, to see in the future. So please make your choices. And we'll give that a, a few seconds for everyone to make their choices. We'll see how the results come through. And that'll let us know what topics to focus on in the future. So results are still rolling. It looks like um, tips and tricks for inserting 3D models is, uh, is barely taking the lead over traffic simulation. I'll give that just a few more seconds. If you haven't made your choice yet, please do. Looks like we've got about, um, I don't know, 15% of you that still need to vote. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close that poll down. And then another poll that we do each webcast as we're trying to gauge uh, where everyone is in their experience with using InfraWorks 360 is this one. So please uh, provide your answer here and let us know where you're at kind of in your journey through uses, usage of InfraWorks. Kind of ranging from have never touched it up to uh, couldn't live without it. And it's nice to see uh, the bulk of everyone in that third and fourth category of, uh, of using it either casually, I'll say, or regularly. So it's nice to see that. Of course, we want to see that all move downward to the last, to the last option where everyone can't live without it. And I'll give you guys just a few more seconds to uh, cast your votes for this poll. We've got about 15% of you that still need to vote. And I'll go ahead and close that down. 
All right, continuing on, um, just want to let you guys know that we have uh, um, an active and thriving community out there. Um, kind of the central hub for this is the community page. You can see the, uh, the URL for that there. You can access all kinds of cool community stuff. The forum where uh, users ask and answer questions and our product team also participates in that. The gallery where you can show the world what you're working on in InfraWorks 360 and go and see what other folks are working on. We've also got the social hub, which is a live feed of what's going on in uh, the different social media sites that are out there. Videos, um, information on upcoming webcasts, and also the recordings from previous webcasts. So I think we're up to our fifth webcast now. The previous four have all been recorded, and you'll find them on the community site. And also uh, a, a nice highlight of the forum. So if you go to the forum page, the URL down at the bottom there, we have this really neat thing called the idea station where you can tell us your ideas of things, ways that you'd like to add to or improve InfraWorks 360. And your members of the community along with you have a chance to vote on and give support to your ideas. And the way it works is the ideas with the most support are get the most uh, attention from our product team and are the most likely to be implemented. So it's a way for us to really really uh, zero in on what's most important to the community as a whole. A um, little disclaimer here, this is really important to understand. Um, we may talk about some preview features or some labs features in this, in this discussion. Please understand that that is in no way a promise that these features will ever exist in the software and there's really no guarantee that anything you see is, is going to be in the software until, until you actually see it there. So just understand that uh, preview is preview and it's not a guarantee of what's going to be in upcoming releases. Also, make the presentation great for everyone. Ask lots of questions. You'll have a, I'm not sure if it's a question or a chat window in your GoToWebinar interface, so please use that. Um, myself and some other uh, team members will be standing by to answer your questions. We can't really do audio phone line, open phone line questions because of the size of the audience. The noise is just um, usually overwhelming, so it's a little more efficient for us to an answer questions through the window. If there are a couple of um, common themes going on or some uh, especially interesting questions, I'll go ahead and, uh, and ask them out loud to, uh, to, Ch to Chakri or whoever happens to be presenting at the time, and we can answer them that way. So please, lots of questions. It just makes it better. And with that, I'm going to uh, pass it over to Chakri. And he's going to take over from here. So, Shakri, you are now presenter. Thanks, uh, Eric. Uh, can you guys hear me? I can hear you just fine. Okay. So, just uh, let me know if you're not seeing my screen. I'm also seeing your screen, so you should be good okay. to go. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Eric, again. And uh, I'm Shakri Gavini, Senior Product Manager with Infoworks 360, and with me, Dan Philibrick, uh, who is the Director of Civil Infrastructure Products, is online so that as we go through the presentation, please feel free to ask questions. Either Dan or Eric will help me answer those things or we can address through as we, as we go through the presentation. <clears throat> so uh, at, at, at the beginning, I want to en uh, uh, emphasize uh, three major things that we have in uh, June 2015 release, uh, you know, you probably are noticing a new way of referring in Forex 360. You know, we're not calling it as a 2016.1 and so on and so forth. In fact, we are calling it as in Forex 360 as a product uh, with, uh, you know, just the month we are releasing is in June 2015. Therefore, I'm referring it as a June 2015 release of Infowars 360. So three key new themes that uh, that I would want to emphasize that we have this uh, this June release. And first and foremost is we are continuing to enhance the you know like uh, a, a uh, to enhance building the better context. And also we are continuing to expand you know like our our um, and on our theme of exploring the design alternatives, design early, design better, design. Uh, faster and explore more alternatives before you act, you actually go to the detailed level of design and which may, which helps you to make informed decisions uh, so that you know you are delivering an optimal project for your clients and to the society and uh, also while you are doing that uh, you are going to gain faster approvals through the increased project understanding among your stakeholders 
uh, is is the uh, is the goal with which we are driving this in 360 and uh, the goal for supporting those goals you know just to be able to design better and uh, and uh, deliver better projects and uh, get faster approvals and so on and so forth the 2015 release of Infrax 360 has uh, three key themes uh, that is delivering. One is uh, building better context, uh, wherein you are going to uh, leverage, uh, you know, uh, continue to leverage some of the tools that we have we have been expanding uh, to make uh, you know more realistic and uh, better, uh, more uh, better aggregation of the data and more realistic data, uh, both in terms of uh, Design as well as uh, you know, as well as uh, uh, as built and uh, in context, building the context as well as the design is 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 going to happen more uh, more realistically. And the second thing is to de design better and uh, through analytic driven civil infrastructure uh, approach. You know, we are going to expand our BIM for civil infrastructure uh, concepts into early design phase through. Uh, a more rapid and better design practices. And the third one is to better collaborate through a compelling web experience and, uh, and uh, enabling your stakeholders to be engaged with the uh, uh, with the model realistic realistic model presentations through the web as well as through the through the uh, in uh, desktop uh, experience. So I'm going to get into these three key themes uh, today. Uh, but first and foremost, I want to touch on, you know, a new sign-in experience uh, that is going to help you uh, work in a more connected way. So this new workflow is a simpler and streamlined in a way that you, once you log in, as you see on the screen, uh, it stays, you keep you logged in for 14 days. You don't have to repeatedly log in. And sometimes, you know, if you, are, if you want to work with your Infox 360 without being connected to the internet, yet access uh, your vertical modules such as roadway design and uh, and other things in the past you are prevented because you are not connected to Infox 360 uh, login account. So now you are on the flight and you just logged in a day back uh, using your you know like credentials that are authenticated and even though you are not connected to internet, you can continue to work with this product without losing any of your entitlements. So for 14 days and afterwards, of course, you must re-sign in to re-authenticate. So it's a it's a easier way, more integrated experience, and uh, and the streamlined way. In building the better context, next to key enhancements uh, enhancement that I would want to mention is uh, uh, is a, a you know multi-scale terrain textures in Infrax 360. Uh, here is uh, so I would like to I, I want to talk about this uh, through this uh, slide. Uh, hopefully my my other videos are working. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, this enhanced level, you know, like uh, multi multi scale terrain textures will help you, uh, you know, uh, 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 make a presentation so that make presentations better. So as you can see here, three three videos, uh, three images on the screen. Uh, so in the past, if you remember. If you have a grass, if you way out, zoomed out, you see the grass is actually textured, you know, like in a grid, artificially textured, you know, like computer generated, artificially textured kind of thing because it doesn't have the same amount of fine granularity as you see in a photographic uh, with a level of uh, uh, photographic view with a level of detail, uh, the zoom view that you are in. And similarly, if you are zooming in into the grass in the past, uh, on the left side image, you can see an aerial texture. Uh, you know, as you zoom in, you, it's, it shows actually very, uh, you know, uh, pixelated uh, photographic kind of uh, image, uh, which, uh, which, you know, takes away the pleasure of, you know, making a, a realistic representation of the model in real world uh, conditions. So to avoid that, this multi-scale text, uh, textures uh, in Infrax 2015 June release uh, will allow you to get a more realistic thing that you are seeing in the middle of the screen whether you are zooming in or zooming out, it preserves with a kind of new algorithm, it, it preserves the texture and it continuously provides you a very good uh, resolution. So you don't have to, in, so in the past, because of this kind of uh, features, 
users were resorting to use the aerial images. Now you can actually re replace these aerial images with the more realistic uh, uh, texture uh, that are captured from other places and uh, render it. So that's the one thing. This this new texture is not only just for the grass and stuff like that, and it, you can actually, the same technique and technology can be used for the roads and other things where if you are zooming into the road segments and the curbs and gutters, the level of detail uh, will present more realistic. So that's uh, uh, that's one, and uh, the second thing, the second key concept, you know, like uh, uh, the in better building, uh, better build better context is the second improvement is in uh, is in the uh, transportation styles, and uh, in 2015 June release, we are providing a better uh, visualization and style transitions around the rail conceptual rail assets in the past conceptual rail assets uh, you know when you are designing them through for example you know like multiple tunnels are coming together and forming one tunnel the transitions were wrong and similarly if you are going through from a you know like in a in, a, in an elevated rail or you know and going through the trough and cut and cover to the tunnel you know like a cover tunnel kind of situations the transitions were wrong and uh, you know, wrong are, are, are non-presentable. Therefore, you have to do a lot of workarounds to clean them. And in some cases, uh, users were taking them back into some of the softwares uh, to make the adjustments, kind of thing. So those things have improved significantly in 2015.3. And uh, also, other important things are uh, you know leveraging the, this more realistic terrain te terrain handling around the around the tracks and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, tunnel exits and uh, and uh, uh, is is also improved and uh, and uh, uh, so just to go with uh, you know like uh, uh, to go with uh, you know uh, to continue talking about the conceptual rail uh, what we have done in building better context. So you can take, uh, for example, in the past, if you are creating roadside barriers or rail track based barriers, you know that those barrier structures have been, are, you know, like uh, are positioned at the point of insertion and they are always normal to the center line. So if the line, if the road is a straight line, the barrier actually aligned well, but if the road is curvilinear, at that at that uh, times, uh, so this is geared. Yeah. So as you can see, so it used to be jagged in the past. So the jagged uh, the jagged barriers were you know like uh, were worked around using the road decorations in the past. So in the new method, what you can do is you can create you can take a a shape file from so for example a concrete barrier shape that you have in Civil 3D cross sectional view and extrude that as a as an SDF file and bring that SD, through uh, that SDF file into Infro, InfroWorks as a, as a custom profile and use that into your uh, road style decoration uh, definition and uh, that particular profile of any shape, you know, like because you are bringing it from AutoCAD, uh, that uh, cross-sectional information, you know, like a guardrail cross-section uh, profile from uh, AutoCAD can be brought in and it can be extruded in InfoWorks now that is parallel to alignment and uh, and taking away the zigzags here in this video you can see that uh, the barrier that is being uh, sent along the two roads and road and the rail actually is cleaned up it's not jagged anymore even around the curves and it is continuous and uh, it is smooth so that's a one significant uh, uh, change that we have done uh, for you know like the conceptual rail uh, workflows uh, can we go to the next slide, please? Give me one second. Here you go. Yeah, so uh, so the second thing, uh, uh, the next, uh, as, uh, as we get into uh, design. So we have three themes. One is a building the better context, and second one is a building better, uh, uh, you know, like a, a, a build, design better, design sooner concept. So we have expanded our capabilities of BIM-oriented ca design capabilities uh, through the analytics-driven approach for both all three aspects of roads, bridges, and drainage uh, drainage modules in InfoWorks in 2015. Uh,
uh, sorry, 2000, uh, June 2016, 2015 release. So for, for, first and foremost, I would want to talk about road component modeling, uh, a preview technology. Uh, like uh, Eric mentioned, this, pre this is a preview technology. We want users to test and guide our development teams to see the direction, how it goes, and what we need to improve. We, it is not, uh, it is not uh, guaranteed that this will be a commercially available tool, even though it is in the preview technology in the software that you have installed. And uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's with a disclaimer that this is still a preview and not commercially usable you know, technology. So we appreciate if you, have, if you experiment with this and offer you know, uh, feedback on the direction. So let me go without any further ado and, and explaining what is this component road modeling is. So as you know that most of the previous technologies in the world, you know, like we have, uh, road modeling is always done as a cross-sectional view. Uh, which is limiting us in terms of thinking and complicating because you are not building it in the context. You are pre-cookie cutting cross-sectional view and extruding and you are making a lot of changes along the way, section by section later. In this word component modeling, the key value proposition that we are offering is you will be able to compose the roads. Uh, go to the next uh, slide, uh, Eric, as we speak. and. Uh, you, sh you will be able to compose the road in context as you are seeing it here in the screen that you should be able to design uh, the road by, you know, let's say that you are starting with a median and a road, uh, roadside uh, uh, two lane assemblies on both sides and then you went ahead and you wanted to add a new bay, bus bay. In the past you have to cre recreate another sub uh, assembly or a template and apply from a station A to station B with the transitions. Now you can actually start sketching those things or drawing those new bus bays in place wherever you want with the start and end stations on in context. You don't have to predetermine and pre-conceptualize uh, any of those things and then apply, you know, like you can do in context and you can keep modifying it without worrying about what, uh, what uh, uh, you know, this video actually explains here. Uh, you know, yeah, I'm composing a road cross, you know, a road, uh, a typical road in context here. So I placed, uh, you know, like a lane on both sides and I'm putting now curb and gutters and after curb maybe I'm putting a sidewalk and, uh, you know, like I can select one, one of those components in between and I can change individually the component in longitudinal and I'm not operating anymore on the sectional uh, aspect now. I'm picking up a component as a component or as a, as a road asset, as a road asset and I'm changing its attributes. The power of this approach, as we see, is that uh, is that uh, you can query these uh, aspects of the road now as a real world assets uh, rather than a cross sectional lines and arcs, uh, sorry, lines and points and shapes uh, that are not uh, true. 3D assets. Now here these are three, two 3D assets and each asset knows its material type and its slopes and its parameters and its quantification therefore is selected based on just like in any other uh, you know like design build world you know that we do each one is treated as an asset. So the, here is an example in Infox uh, you know component road preview technology how a road with intersection is dealt. Uh, where you are going to keep your, you know, like cross slope of the main road same and your side road is warped to meet at the edge of travel ways. And uh, you can also get to, you know, super elevated conditions, you know, manually at the moment uh, through the preview technology. So where you can actually, spe you can specify the cross slopes of the road from station A to station B, change them to be, you know, like fully warped uh, with a limit of, uh, limitation of transition lengths being the 20 meters at the moment. <coughs> So next slide, please. Just uh, waiting for that. So the traffic simulation is again another preview technology and this preview is available for you with, uh, you know, like uh, if you have a roadway design module entitlement. And uh, there are two ways of you, you know, we well, two ways of personas that we want to target this traffic preview. If you are a, uh, if you are, <coughs> it, it's just a highway engineer who wants to explore alternatives of effectiveness of the designs that you are doing. You can do traffic animations with a. Uh, with a heuristically loaded traffic uh, traffic data but depending on the type of the roads and uh, you can see how the queues will be built and uh, and uh, and uh, various alternatives designs of your road junctions uh, what is their impact on the traffic pattern and the second persona if you are a serious traffic engineer who wants to experiment with uh, uh, you know traffic modeler who wants to experiment with uh, you know like how the 
the demand is changing, uh, depending on the changes to the nearby uh, facilities, you can go into the traffic analyst panel of Infrastructure 360 traffic simulation preview technology, and uh, you can change, you know, like the signals, sorry, the intersection data and the traffic data, and also the signal type and the control type of the junction uh, to see uh, the impact of the design and the uh, impact of, uh, you know, like uh, new facilities added around your, your road network onto the traffic network and, uh, there, uh, and, and therefore make, you know, relevant uh, proposals. So, next slide. So, here is an example uh, that uh, in this view that you are seeing, uh, suppose that in an, in an urban condition you are adding a new traffic facility. For example, you are opening up a new parking lot or maybe an opening a parking lot gate on a different side of the uh, building. So you can see the different, you know, effect of that uh, before and after on the network. So you're not ch necessarily changing any changes to your road network, but you can see the impact of other development around uh, on, on your uh, the network, or you can make the change, uh, you know, like to the road network and uh, see what is the impact, you know, either way. So here is the case where, you know, before making an improvement, how the traffic is, you can see the cyan colored, which means the queue lengths uh, as uh, a few red areas where the queue lengths are, the delays are longer. Now you added a new uh, traffic, you know, like exit from a parking lot. And that actually, you know, so simulated the same one for the same traffic, except that the traffic patterns changed. Now you can see the impact of that on the on the network area, with more areas increasing the queue length and some of them reducing the queue length. So simple way. So the most some of the comments that we keep hearing about the traffic analysis from our customers is it is so easy to use that uh, you know it is uh, it is catching the attention of a lot of the users not necessary not only the highway engineers who wants to experiment with it even the traffic modelers have expressed oh this is very easy and uh, to set up as well as to experiment and to see the results in a detailed manner so that is actually very uh, very a positive feedback that we got so so far so next so let's go to the next slide um, more slides so in 2016, sorry, in uh, June 2015 release, the key improvement for the building better uh, in road design point of view is the introduction of roundabouts. This is not a preview. This is in the product, and uh, and in the first round, uh, we are supporting uh, ASTO-based roundabout standards. Uh, these standards are very similar to what you have uh, you now. If you have experience with uh, Autodesk vehicle tracking software, exactly the same standards for uh, ASTO-based US standards we have brought in. And uh, so you can now select a, uh, let's go to the next slide, uh, uh, Eric. You can select an intersection. Uh, it is very easy to uh, make a conversion. One more slide, please. Uh, it's very easy to make a, 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 you know, like a roundabout in this. As you see in this video, you right-click onto the intersection, convert it into a roundabout, and uh, as soon as you convert it to roundabout, your intersection asset card changes to the roundabout asset card, and uh, roundabout asset card offers you to uh, choose which uh, roundabout standard that you want to uh, you want to select, and uh, you can also change. Uh, you know, like the arm lengths, you know, like you can extend, you can delete, at the, you know, sorry, you can extend or you can shrink the arm lengths uh, so that, you know, it, it uh, you know, by default it gives you to the standards what is the minimum arm length is needed for the uh, selected road types, but you can, you, you can keep varying. As we, we don't, what we don't have right now in 2015 June release is that, you know, a detailed uh, editing functionality deviating from your standards. So, so all what we have today is a standards driven intersection design, sorry, roundabout design. And as we move along, we want to invest uh, more in terms of customizing that uh, rule driven roundabout uh, and uh, giving control to the users about uh, lane markings and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, adding a bypass lane or even changing the uh, geometry after the creation of the rule driven uh, roundabouts. So, so today, it's a it's a it's a completely rule driven roundabout that meets to your standard. So next slide, please. So again, in the building better context for the drainage design, we have uh, three key uh, enhancements that I would like to mention. Uh, one is in the pavement drainage analysis. Uh, we you know like there are new uh, inlet performance and you know like 
uh, inlet performance uh, computations and also expanded uh, you know expanded analytics to support your design and the second one is uh, a flood simulation software so a, a preview technology and the third one is uh, uh, is uh, uh, Chameleon product is uh, available on uh, project, uh, sorry, on, on labs.rds.com for uh, defining your, you know, uh, creating your custom content. Again, it's a preview technology uh, at the moment so that you can create uh, custom content for your introverts as well as you can publish the same libraries for your civil 3D so that you, so that you can have a new way of creating a pipe network content. <coughs> and uh, so those are the key, three key major changes that happen uh, in payment drainage, uh, uh, sorry, in drainage module. Next slide, please. So next slide. This is a very detailed slide uh, that I'm going to go through. So so here in the pipe network, uh, uh, night networks inspecting the performance uh, uh, functionality. You know you can inspect the performance of uh, you know uh, now supports annual exceedance uh, probability from the library. Again, you know most of these standards are U.S. based standards. IDF rainfall support lo local library and WHA equation only right now we are doing. Uh, however, you know, like uh, uh, in future, that we want to expand it to beyond what we have, and it also does the tailwater boundary conditions for the networks. And uh, you know, it's uh, again uh, the goal is to democratize. You know, like you don't have to have drainage specialist drainage skills required to make this analysis. At the same time, if you are a drainage specialist, uh, uh, drainage specialist, you can go to the uh, uh, advanced level through by editing the heuristics and the rules behind the scenes and make it more customizable to your needs. So next slide. So here is an example of the you know like the pipe network performance inspection enhancements that we have done. Now you have in Canvas you can actually uh, uh, make uh, you know using this annual exuberance probability and tailwater conditions along with that you can also do in canvas overlay of, uh, of the data of uh, analysis results here on the screen you are seeing the you know energy gradient line and you know hydraulic gradient line presented and you can identify more effectively the subcharge uh, parts of the network and you can make you can access the data and you can make a report of uh, areas and you can make an adjustment and see the impact of the adjusted network in our resized network and its impact on the on the such charges. Next, so this is a visual that uh, shows about the project border. This is a a partnership with one of our you know Hydronia, a third party developer who have a, a tested uh, 2D flood simulation software, and uh, their algorithm has been ported so that you know like you are doing a, a an external uh, flood simulation analysis and bring the data into InfoWorks for the presentations and the reports and uh, interaction for the uh, uh, interaction. So if you go to the next slide, uh, you can see, so you can do this flood simulation and uh, uh, you can make the, next please, uh, you can make the flood simulations by selecting in a project area around, you know, as you see here and just define, you know, like your, uh, flood simulation area study just like in the traffic area you define and you establish inflow and outflow you know boundary conditions therefore and then do the analysis and this uh, hydronia based you know like the uh, project boulder uh, will uh, do the analysis of the flood simulation and it does uh, you know like simulates and uh, offers you uh, various uh, uh, metrics around it uh, including the depths and velocities of the flow uh, at specified locations and makes uh, thematic as well as uh, uh, presentable data available to you on the screen. Here you are seeing how it is a time-based uh, growth of the, you know, like the flood and, uh, you know, it also can give you the depths at various locations and gradient depths. And uh, if you closely observe, it also actually provided you the arrows with, uh, you know, the flow directions and the intensities. So the next page, please. Uh, so. The final one I said is in Project Chameleon for InfoWorks 360. It's again a preview technology like the previous one. Project, you know, like Boulder is a preview technology. Both of them these uh, can be accessed from labs.rds.com. Uh, you will have to have a separate installs for both of these.
is to and uh, project chameleon again is for the design, uh, road designers and drainage designers who wants who wishes to customize the pipe network content for infoworks and civil 3d and uh, and uh, you know you can define your custom cap and publish them as a catalogs for infoworks and civil 3d next slide. Yep, so this is how you know the catalogs that are published will come in. Next slide, please. So this is a simple video of the interface that is showing Project Chameleon. You know, these are the you know some of the content that is defined. This is a inventor-based OE uh, inventor supported or inventor OEM based interface for creation of the parts. And you can create various parts. Uh, and you know, like uh, define them with the attributes as uh, you know needed. Uh, and once you do that, you can publish them into catalogs. Two types of catalogs you can publish, as I said. And here I'm publishing for an inference based catalog. And uh, once a catalog is published, you can bring them into your uh, uh, inference that particular catalog, and they can start using. Uh, you know those parts into defining your uh, uh, drainage network. So that's the one that we created those two and these things all this content came in from uh, chameleon based uh, catalog. So next slide please. The process is the same just it's how you can author. So the bridge design two major, uh, two, three I would say, two major uh, uh, first and foremost is that in the past we have the girders and uh, uh, and uh, uh, girders and substructures are parametrically you can define them in the past peers and uh, in in June 2015 you have uh, abutments in a parametric abutment modeling is uh, is exposed uh, this technology like in the drainage networks is using the same uh, inventor based chameleon based parts. However, we don't have yet the user uh, definable chameleon uh, part building for uh, bridge components, uh, including the abutments and piers and uh, uh, such. Uh, it, it is something that uh, you know for future consideration, uh, we are you know like we are looking into uh, as a natural expansion for the chameleon-based content authoring. Uh, but for now, user can, as you can see on the screen here. You know, you can you can model uh, parametrically. You can uh, you can uh, do a lot of editing for the uh, for abutments, uh, and you can have uh, reasonably customizable content uh, in your models. Can you go to the next slide, please, for the video. And uh, the second important improvement uh, is uh, the next slide uh, is uh, in a girder line analysis, and the girder line analysis continue to be a preview. And enhanced, so you know, like enhanced, we have enhanced user usability and uh, and uh, you know, like uh, and uh, uh, reporting experience uh, in line guard analysis, and it continues to be a preview technology. And uh, next slide. So next slide, please. So here is a small video explaining explaining the workflow with the you know girder modeling. And you are seeing it's our abutment modeling. Abutment modeling, you can see that a lot of parameters are exposed. You can change the you know type and uh, you know like dimensions of the selected girder, and you can also change certain uh, shape components. And uh, you are adding the bridge there. You added the bridge, and you are going into the girder line analysis. Selected the girder line analysis. Simplified the interface. And you're going to use, of course, it's a preview technology. Therefore, no cloud credits used, and it produces a very detailed, uh, you know, moments and forces uh, report for the uh, for the concrete girder bridges. And this is very similar, and uh, uh, it leverages the Autodesk uh, ASBD Autodesk uh, Structural Bridge Analysis software uh, uh, functionality. And it uses only part of it so far, you know, like uh, for and restricted to the concrete girder bridges. So next slide. So in final, third and final thing for bridges is uh, uh, is uh, we have an ex expanded. Uh, probably I'm going to touch at the end of this presentation. Uh, is uh, interoperability with uh, Civil 3D, or uh, you can actually open uh, these bridges in Civil 3D, and they can make them. You know, like you can use them. They come into the Civil 3D 
be as a as a again, solid sorry AutoCAD solids, and you can use them there in profiles and sections. So here is the collaboration, the third uh, third aspect of the product. So we talked about building better context. We talked uh, talked about you know designing better and uh, faster and uh, and uh, sooner. And the third one is uh, collaborating. So in Infowars uh, 2015 June release, we have uh, uh, the key uh, enhancement we have done is for you know ex enhancing your experience to share your models through the web, which uh, uh, narrows down the gap in how you are presenting to it, so that you know the experience is very similar to your desktop performance. Both the quality of the data model that is uh, that is uh, given to you, as well as uh, uh, quality of presentations that are made. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please, uh, Eric? So here you can see that you know, like this, uh, this uh, is a web view of the model. Sorry, uh, web view of the model. Of course, the same experience in the web bar as well as mobile. And you can see the entire model is available now. And the places that you are seeing are you know, like either a 3D uh, 3D view or a panoramic view of the models. And how is it brought in? If you go to the next slide, you know, uh, so we can show you a brief workflow. And one more slide, please. So this is an example of a panorama. And the previous one is an example of a 3D model that is taken as a snapshot. And in a, three, in a panoramic view, you are actually making a three-dimensional uh, view here. This is suppose that this is a, a your three in towards 360 model. So you created a lot of bookmarks. I'm exploring the bookmarks that you have created here, and uh, and uh, then I'm going to sync this particular model, including the bookmarks that you have created. So each bookmark actually has a tag, you know, like whether it's a 3D model kind of thing or you published as a, as a panoramic view. So if this is a view that you are looking into your web view, as you can see, uh, when you published uh, your web scenarios, uh, you know, it provided you a link and you are going to your, your, suppose you are supplying that link to your stakeholders, they can actually access this particular model and they can click on those uh, 3D model uh, icon or, or, or the panorama view icon and uh, relevantly, they are able to uh, so you can see that the presentation is stunning and uh, you know like the data is very realistic and uh, this is some one thing that uh, some of the customers are very thrilled and gave very positive feedback on on the quality of the presentation speed and uh, simplicity uh, how uh, uh, design information can be uh, communicated to their stakeholders next Next slide, please, Eric. Yeah, I don't know if you want so, to cover some of this stuff. Yeah, so we can continue going. Most of them is, uh, you know, just a simplified interface and the defects. Uh, so, you know, like bug fixes and improvements, you know, bird's eye view, bug fixes and UI improvement for uh, a few other additional languages support we have done. And, uh, and uh, you know, the experience is particularly, you know, like streamlined for both, uh, you know, like various web as well as, uh, you know, like mobile uh, devices. Any specific thing that you, we can come back to that, you know, based on the questions. Chakri, any, uh, do you have interest in talking about field assets at all? Uh, we can, uh, you know, like, uh, it's not going along with the June 2015 release, so we don't need to touch that. Okay. Yep. So, uh, do we have, you know, just we have, if we have a slide uh, on uh, the data interoperability with Civil 3D, that's good enough, I think. So, I, I want to cover, so we talked about, I think this slide probably summarizes. We talked a lot about, uh, you know, previews and uh, preview technologies and labs technologies. I just want to summarize. Uh, there are three preview technologies for introverts right now. And these are uh, these are not necessarily that uh, you know like we will be ever you know like just experimental. We want you to provide us feedback, and depending on the value that uh, you see, we want to elevate them and mature them into full-fledged products based on the user feedback. And these are you know right now what we have is traffic simulation for Infrared 360 is a preview technology that I spoke to, and you more, all, most of you knew already that the corridor optimization for Infrared 360 also is a preview technology for the last one year or one and a, one and a half year and it continues to be there. And the third one is a line guard analysis which was introduced a you know three months back and it continued to be a preview technology today uh, as we just spoke. So the next slide. So there are three uh, uh, preview. The, so 
So through three preview technologies I talked to previously were cloud-based. So there are three preview technologies in product, in desktop for you. So those are component road model, which is what we just spoke about, you know, like BIM-based load modeling and the longitudinal in context. And the second one is a land areas for inflows, which is actually, which gives you a suitability study maps for various uh, transportation and related projects where uh, you can analyze based on the soil types and slope types and the topographical suitability analysis. Uh, sorry, suitability maps for Inflows 360, which was there on the right side on my slide and uh, uh, is already there for, you know, is, is exposed in a year back or something like that. So land areas for Inflows 360 was introduced uh, three months back during March 2015 release. is still a preview technology in the product. You can continue to use that and evaluate the technology and the directions to create uh, you know, simple building pads and uh, stuff like that to do a, a, a you know, varieties of grading and, uh, you know, as site gradings. So, the next page. So, the next page talks about three uh, Autodesk Labs technologies. These are outside InfraWorks installation. The previous two slides that I talked to are accessible from within InfraWorks. So, the two, three of them are cloud-based entitlements and three of them are pro just in product. And these are actually external installations that you are going to do. So, they are Project Boulder, which is for flood simulation for InfraWorks 360. And Project Chameleon for InfraWorks 360 also can publish the content for uh, uh, Civil 3D. And Project Commuter, which is a, a, a complete uh, traffic analyst uh, ana analysis software for powerful, powerful traffic analysis software for serious traffic modelers that can do more than just a simple traffic. It's a, it's a agent-based traffic analysis for both the pedestrian traffic and crowd simulations and also, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, doing intersection studies as we just, uh, so these are the three things. Yeah. Thanks. That's about it. Any questions so far? Yeah, Chakri, that's uh, pretty much the Sorry. end of, uh, of the content in the slide presentation. So we have a, a few minutes left for questions. Dan, I don't know if you have audio capabilities, but uh, were there any, I, I see you're busy answering questions. Were there any that popped up that might be worth uh, mentioning? Yeah, I don't know if you can hear me. I'm kind of on a weak Wi-Fi, so my signal may not be great. But yeah, there's a few. So nice, nice job, Chakri. Great questions, everyone. So I'm trying to keep up with them. So Chakri, one, there are several questions around line striping and how line striping behaves with the new component road capability. I'm paraphrasing the questions because they're kind of in the list here, but there were a few people that are asking about line striping support. Is that something? Can you touch on that? Yes. Uh Today, uh, line striping is, uh, is, is handled, uh, uh, you know, we haven't done anything special treatment yet. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt because I said uh, it is certainly something that we are looking at to the future, you know, like we'll be, we'll be doing it differently, uh, line striping as an asset into uh, BIM-based component modeling is what is our direction, you know, we want to get into, but having said that, the line striping, you will continue to use the similar kind of approaches that you are doing in the past as a as a means of road decorations. Uh, that's uh, that's the one approach that I would address. Uh, one thing that I didn't talk about in today is road decorations. We have actually uh, brought forward the road decorations functionality that you have on the style-based design roads into component-based design road uh, design roads also with more power and better control to you. Uh, so having said that, these things will be working uh, on, you know, they are working already on tune based or preview technology. Uh, you, can, you can use that, uh, you know, like uh, approach for uh, uh, striping and uh, uh, road, uh, striping. So today you see the road striping that is a part of the component definition. Uh, you know, you, you know the, in the video that you saw that you are seeing actually, you know, like uh, Jeff Travelways and other markings, but they were just like in the past in the style-based roads, you know, they were written into the definition of that particular, you know, hard-coded into the component uh, definition. Uh, it's not a controllable element yet. That, does that uh, answer? Uh, yeah, I think to a certain degree. Uh, there's one user, Chakra, that has a few questions and we'll follow up directly with that person uh, and so, some specifics about line striping. And so another another question, which I'll just uh, there were a few people that asked about the versions of the of the model, and so with this 
with this update, you um, you have you update your models, and every user that's collaborating or sharing needs to be on the latest version. So just wanna just wanna make sure that's clear to everyone. So there was a there was a bit of di a few questions related to that. Um, let's see. I'm just kind of scanning here to see to see if there's others here that we want to bring up. I'll chime in here, uh, Dan. There was a question about the multi-scale uh, yeah. multi-scale material styles and, and where to find those in the product. If you go into the style palette and look under material styles and then terrain, you'll find three of them there. I think there's grass, gravel, and, and one other one. And they uh, you can you can apply even though they're in the terrain folder, you can apply them anywhere you would apply a material style. So to a coverage or a road or or any of those areas, they can be used. Dan, you finding any other uh, questions? Here's a question, Chuck. Real. Yeah, yeah. I got, I got one other. Yeah, I have one other question here. So, um, uh, one of the attendees asking: Is it possible to see the traffic simulation anima animations within the walkthrough video? So, integrated within the walkthrough videos. At so, the moment. Yeah, go ahead, Dan. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, take it away, Chuck. Yeah, at the moment, no. You know, I'm assuming that this is a, through the storyboard uh, uh, view, right? Uh, I would assume so. Yeah. So you know, at the moment, no, and that's something that we are uh, we are considering. Okay, thanks. And I see a question on uh, you know, like any documentation on how to do that uh, SDF-based uh, uh, profile uh, creation for the extra object extrusion. Charles Zerico is asking about that and. Uh, uh, I think uh, you know uh, that could be a nice uh, blog post, uh, Eric. Thanks, Chakri. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll add that. Um, I, I wanted to point out too that there is a video that was recently posted to YouTube and the community site, and also to the Facebook page for InfraWorks 360 that kind of does a a quick 15-minute overview of of um, some of the things we talked about. I would say most of them. So if you want to review that after the webcast, that's that's a good one as well. But uh, I'm showing about five minutes left, so um, do we have any uh, burning last minute questions before I wrap things up? Dan or Chakri? Yeah, I don't, I don't think so, Eric. Uh, I mean, maybe yeah. this one, Eric, to put you on the spot here a little bit, I was going to follow up with this user directly, but the question is uh, beginner tutorials for InfraWorks. I don't know if you saw that one. That one might be of interest to to everyone on the call, uh, we can follow up after with everyone. Or do you have any any uh, specific thoughts on that one, Eric? Yeah, just just that there are, there are lots of materials available out there. Um, if you check out the the Knowledge Network, the Autodesk Knowledge Network, our uh, our learning folks and our product folks are constantly adding to that. So, um, for example, the what, what was asked about before with um, with the custom profiles, you know, if you go into the knowledge network, which is tied into the help, it's all tied together. You'll find um, instructions on how to use those those kinds of features. So uh, yeah, there's tons tons of stuff out there, and, and a lot of it's our stuff, you know, from the knowledge network. So I'd I'd go there first. Good, thanks, Eric. Sure. There is a question on uh, three more minutes, and there is a question on uh, you know, like explain the cost usage of the cloud services. Uh, there are only two cloud services that are uh, that are uh, uh, you know like in the product uh, that are that are charged. Other services like model builder and uh, and uh, you know traffic simulation, line guard analysis are still preview technology, and we are not charging any of them. The two charged services are profile optimization and watershed analysis. Uh, first and foremost, I think we can uh, you know it's it's uh, publicly available. Uh, uh, cloud cost, you can Google that, but uh, you know, like, uh, but uh, let me give you a brief idea. You know, like, for we charge per five kilometer basis for both of the products, and uh, you know, it's a hundred cloud credits, correct, Dan? Uh, you need to confirm anyway, uh, looking into the Autodesk contracts. Uh, you know, we've already asked this question, but for each five kilometers of profile optimization, we are charging uh, uh, 100 cloud credits, and for hydrology and watershed analysis, it is for, up to, for each five kilometers of road, we charge 50 cloud credits, and, uh, and uh, point-based watershed analysis is free. Uh, did, uh, did I 
Is that accurate, Dan? That looks right. Yes, yes, it is targeting. Yep. And there are a few other questions on the road decorations. I think we'll, uh, I'll, uh, three or four of them will follow it up directly with uh, with this group, and particularly the person who asked also. And uh, some of them are work in progress things. And uh, uh, will you be able to randomize? Will if the road decorations will be able to randomize uh, several different objects in uh, one instance? Uh, in one instance. Uh, so basically, you wanted to put the uh, random trees. Uh, is that the question? What a very to vary or randomize several. So in the new approach, you can, this is one advantage over the style-based road decorations to component-based road decorations. When you are creating, for example, uh, trees along your road, you can, in the past, actually, you couldn't make any changes. Uh, uh, you know, like, uh, it's a whole whole series of uh, uh, things. The trees are one bucket. You know, we are now you know, like uh, expanding it into being able to edit individually each one of them to, you know, in, in the component-based world. Again, it's a preview technology, so just uh, take a look into that and uh, randomize. I'm not sure I need to get back to you. If, if there is an upfront randomization of placement of the, you know, like the, the things on the roadside, uh, but certainly you can make them edits and you can adjust the gaps and it is a better algorithm in terms of the placement also. All right, I think we're uh, we're about out of time. So I just wanted to remind everyone that um, in a couple of weeks, in, on July 1st, we'll have our next webcast, which will deal with leveraging InfraWorks 360 web and mobile. So please join us for that and uh, look for the registration information and announcement on uh, on the sites that you see on your screen. Thanks, everyone, for attending. Great job, Chakri. Great job, Dan. And uh, we'll see everyone uh, on July 1st. Thanks.